Hi, I'm George Levy. I believe we're changing the world one blockchain at a time. In this video, I'm going to tell you exactly what a Bitcoin transaction is. Stay tuned. When we look at what is a Bitcoin transaction, a Bitcoin transaction is a transfer of Bitcoin value that is broadcast to the Bitcoin network and is assembled into blocks on the Bitcoin blockchain. Let's review exactly what that definition means. If you really look at a Bitcoin transaction, it is simply a message describing the transfer of Bitcoin value, which is digitally signed using cryptography. In many ways, it behaves very much like a check that specifies who has bitcoins and where those bitcoins are going to be going. These bitcoin transactions are digitally signed by the owner's wallet using their private key. Bitcoin transactions are then sent to the entire bitcoin network for verification. As you may know, bitcoin is transferred peer to peer. That is, there's no need to have a third party such as a bank or a credit card. However, when someone sends Bitcoin to someone else, that transaction, which has been digitally signed using cryptography, needs to be verified by the entire Bitcoin network globally. Once a transaction is verified, these transactions are assembled into blocks and they are added to the Bitcoin blockchain. Each transaction, as it gets added, gets added into the block and becomes a permanent part of the Bitcoin blockchain. Because of this, all Bitcoin transactions can be verified on the Bitcoin blockchain. It is important to note that there are multiple transactions per block on the Bitcoin blockchain and the miners cluster together groups of transactions into blocks. Let's discuss now the contents of that Bitcoin transaction. When you look at the contents of a Bitcoin transaction, it has three main components. The first one is an input. The second one is the output. The third one is the amount. We will now see how these three main components tie into a Bitcoin transaction by describing it within the imagery of a check, like we explained previously. If we think of a check as a Bitcoin transaction, the input corresponds to the source where the current owner of the bitcoins received those bitcoins from. It references the most recent bitcoin transactions from where those bitcoins came from. Notice I said transactions because the input can make reference to multiple transactions and often for one specific transaction you may have to reference previous transactions in order to add them all up and get the amount needed to transfer. The output specifies where the bitcoins being sent are addressed to and it will list the Bitcoin addresses of the recipients of the Bitcoins being sent the transaction. Notice I said addresses because you can have more than one output as the output of a Bitcoin transaction. And these recipients will be receiving it at their Bitcoin addresses. As we've specified, the Bitcoin address is a hashed version of the public key of someone. Finally, we have the amount of the transaction. And this lists the amount of Bitcoins that will be transferred in this transaction. Notice that the Bitcoin protocol does not measure transactions in terms of Bitcoins, but rather in Satoshis. And there are 100 million Satoshis in one Bitcoin. What that means is that if a transaction is less than one Bitcoin, it's okay, because the transaction will be measured ultimately in Satoshis. Finally, the entire transaction needs to be signed using the owner's private key. This is the cryptography element I was mentioning, and the whole process of digitally signing a transaction is handled by the owner's wallet. The owner never has to reveal their private key to anybody. Now that we have covered these elements, let's take a look at an example of sending and receiving bitcoins to illustrate exactly how the transfer of bitcoins happens between parties. In this example, Alice wants to send five bitcoins to Ben. In order for Alice to be able to send five bitcoins to Ben, she needs to have five bitcoins available. Alice, for this example, does have bitcoins. She actually has a wallet, and that wallet has 20 bitcoins available. 
Just as importantly, Alice has access to the private key corresponding to those 20 bitcoins and that wallet. Because she has access to the private key, which she does not share with anybody, she is able to authorize a transfer of bitcoins to someone else. In order for Alice to be able to send the bitcoins to Ben, Ben needs to also have a wallet. He does have a wallet. He also happens to have the private key corresponding to that wallet, which would enable Ben to be able to do future transactions to send bitcoins that are actually stored in his wallet. In order for Alice to be able to transfer the five bitcoins to Ben, Ben needs to share with her his bitcoin address. His bitcoin address is a hashed version of his public key. Upon receiving the bitcoin address, Alice creates a transaction to transfer five bitcoins to Ben's bitcoin address. After the transaction is complete, the Bitcoin blockchain is updated with the new ownership of those five Bitcoins. I hope you enjoyed this video and that you learned something in the process. I bring you brand new videos every single week, so I invite you also to subscribe so we can stay in touch. Also, if you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them below. I would love to hear from you. Until next time, we are changing the world, one blockchain at a time. I'm George Levy. Thank you for watching.